everyone. I'm Dar from uh, the DXFencing.com. Uh, Today we're here to talk about uh, strainers and posts um, and so some of the products that we use um, on our jobs. Um, the first thing we're going to talk about is pine posts. It's one of the most common things that we get asked to install. So this is a 1.8 metre, um, 5 to 6 inch or 150 mil pine post. Probably the most common for a, a pine strainer. This one here is a 3 to 4 inch, 75 to 100 mil uh, pine post, 1.8 metres. Um, we're just using the 1.8s uh, to show as examples. As you can see, these are both new posts, already starting to split. Uh, not uncommon, um, but the cost of these is pretty cheap. Um, these are anywhere from you know, 5 to $15 for a pine post, which over the long term uh, might be cheap to install, but it's certainly not cheap in the long term. Um, some of the advantages of pine, as I said, are cost. So to purchase, uh, pretty cheap. Um, the, uh, some of the pros um, would certainly be um, ease of access to get the product. Uh, pine's you know, readily available all throughout Australia. Um, some of the, uh, the cons, so to speak, um, pine has a tendency to split, as you can see. Also has a tendency to burn very, very quickly. Um, and in recent Australian bushfires, um, you know, that's been proved time and time again. So we, although we do put in pine posts and strainers, um, we try not to, unless a customer really, really wants to use pine post. Um, and that generally comes back to cost. Um, uh, installation for pine posts is pretty straightforward. Um, as they're a solid post, they're not hollow. Um, we need to pre-drill a hole, um, usually with an earth holder or uh, sometimes by hand if we can't get the machinery in. Um, and then we drive we drive the post into the ground with a um, pneumatic air rammer. Some people use tractors. Um, very costly to purchase a tractor and all the equipment to go with it, and then of course you've got to transport it around. So we use pneumatic drivers, um, quite efficient um, and small, much smaller than a tractor. So to drive in a pond post, we have to pre-drill the hole, um, which obviously adds time to the installation. And then we use, as I said, an, uh, an air rammer. This is the attachment for an air rammer. Well, this sits over the top. Air rammer sits on top. This plate will actually cover it. This is for a slightly big post, obviously. Um, and then the dolly, which is this component here, actually busts down on top, smashes down on top and continuously until the post is driven in. So some of the uh, all the advantages of the air rammer is that it's quick, it's efficient, um, you can get the machinery into most places. The disadvantages are that um, the the cost to install the post um, is generally more than steel, um, so that's a, obviously a major disadvantage. Um, not to say that we won't use pine and that we don't, you know, don't suggest pine in some places. Um, it all depends on, on what the customer wants. So those are some of the things to think about. To hang a gate off a pine post, you really need to use a minimum of the 5 to 6 inch or the 150 mil, um, just for strength and obviously a lot taller, 2.4 uh, is usually a good size. Um, it will give you the strength that you need. Um, just remember that you can't just have one post, you've got to have two plus, plus a middle piece, so it be a H strainer, um, so that obviously adds to the cost. Um, and then of course you gate fittings, you have to drill the holes, then you have to staple the wire on or attach the single single strand wire or barbed wire depending on what you're doing. There's a multitude of uses for pine um, and it just comes really back to the cost. Um, the initial outlay for materials is cheap, um, but the, uh, the installation cost can be a lot higher than some other materials. Um, pretty straightforward. Still, posts. I think about uh, 
uh, 82 millimeters in diameter, um, and it's about a four millimeter wall uh, thickness, which we can see on this sample here. So I'll take some photos and show you a little bit later. Uh, so this particular post um, gets driven into the ground um, down to about sort of just, a, just below this hole. Um, and we usually drive a staff to get in through each side to stop it twisting. Um, really strong post. Um, with these, we use what's called an adjuster stay, which you can see on the ground down there, and this base plate. Um, I'll show some uh, photos of an assembled one so you can see how they work. Uh, of course, they get driven in. Um, there's a uh, book rod or an all thread that runs through to the plate. Um, and then a, um, a triangle, it looks like a triangle, I guess you'd say. Um, pretty straightforward. Um, they're quite easy to drive in the ground, yet again. Uh, our pneumatic driver is set up, so this is a sample, is set up. This dolly sits on top, pretty straightforward. This here is the guide for this particular post. Sits in there like that. Um, and then the striker, you just think of the way a jackhammer works. Um, and we can have uh, one of these steel post assemblies set up in about 15 or 20 minutes, um, as, a, as opposed to pine, which does take some time um, to do properly. Um, so that's the, that's the steel post itself. Um, the beauty of the steel post um, is these gate assemblies. So these are all prefabricated, um, very easy to get a hold of, very strong um, and adjustable. Um, the bottom here with the gate sits um, is adjustable backwards and forwards to help you level the gate out. Um, and it can also be tech screwed in through these holes to give it a little bit more strength. Um, and then the gate clip, which attaches to the gate, goes around your post and then back in and clips in like that and there's various other options available as well these come in kit pretty straightforward stuff uh, steel pickets oh, now we're going to discuss uh, steel pickets uh, pretty common in Australia um, this is a 1650 mil post uh, very common obviously it's black they come in black or galvanized. Um, for the average person, you know, the cost difference from galvanized and, and black is not, you know, unless you're going through creeks or galleys or whatever, um, most of these steel pickets will outlast most people. Um, I do recommend that you use an intermediate post every 25 to 50 meters, depending on how long the run is. So an intermediate post is an intermediate post. It's probably three times the weight um, of a of a standard staff picket. Now obviously this one's a bit higher. And the idea of these is to give strength to the middle of in between the two strainer posts. Um, these are real these sixteen all of these depending on where you're buying from. Um, obviously when you're buying staff pickets, the more you buy them, the the cheaper they become. Um, these can't the strainers in case you want it, they just don't have the strength. Um, so as far as height, 1650, 1800, and then it's 2.4 metre, which you probably can't even see the top of that, but it's okay. Um, so all of these pickets will still give you the same fence height. The only difference is that you've got more posts in the ground. So when we have more posts in the ground, it's stronger. Um, so something to consider. So the price difference between an 1800 and a 2400 is only maybe a couple of dollars per post. Um, and I recommend if you do have soft ground sands or whatever, that you use a 2.4. Um, and then we're going to talk about prefabricated wire, which um, there's a million different brands out there. And, uh, additional products, this is a uh, southern wire product, ironically called Carnitess. Um, not a bad product, I actually quite like using it and I've used it on quite a few jobs. Um, relatively inexpensive compared to some brands. Um, so 
this is great for sheep, horses, uh, cattle, whatever you want to do. It's sort of more of an all purpose. There are other, other products out there that are specific uh, to certain needs. Um, this one I like because the actual rings are tightly looped as opposed to some that are a little bit loose now moving in the wire. Um, uh, so this is our 790 30. So seven vertical runs. 900 millimeter high and 90 centimeter high, that's three foot in the old scar, and 30 centimeters between each one, no, every vertical. Um, pretty common for the scar molds. It's only $300 for 200 meters, so it's quite inexpensive. There are a lot of other molds out there, other brands, and of course other products, even in the southern wire range, um, they sort of go up in price. Uh, in that, depending on the size of this, I'll also come in with this. I believe 100 meter rolls and 500 meter rolls, which if you're doing a lot, it's two foot five and a 500 meter roll. Those rolls weigh somewhere around 380 kilos, so keep that in mind. If you're deciding to go and pick it up, you can pick it up. Sometimes it's worth getting it delivered. Um, good product, uh, like I said, inexpensive, easy to get. 